it so that this one is backwards. They start with the negative here on the bottom. The positive comes out of there into the negative. It flows through this cell out of the positive, back into the negative, and out of the positive. So this end is your, ne or your positive, and this end on the far battery is your negative. So the, it's like an S. It goes through, the power goes through it this way instead of through all the batteries this way. So now you're joining the voltage and the amperage stays the same. So if this battery is one and a half amps, then the whole string is one and a half amps and the, the, where you get the increase is in the voltage. So we're not making any changes, but I thought I'd just add that. So they're the same? They're the same. <laughs> Except... You lost me there a little bit, but... Okay, let me re-explain. So, I understood it, but... Well, what I meant by that is this 1.5 amp hour, you're trying, as a person, you'd wonder how, how does that apply to this battery? Because you don't, there's no information on here to say what its capacity is. And 1.5 amp hours relates to its capacity, not, a, not its voltage. So if you're trying to figure out what these have for capacity from factory, then you can use that number, it's very valuable. So we know that they did a voltage stack, not an amperage stack. So this is a 12 volt string, 1.5 amp hours. That would make these batteries one and a half amp hours. One and a half amp hours is 1500 milliamp hours. Okay, so this battery tested out at 2399 milliamp hours. And that's less than what it should have been new. So this one is close to a 3000 milliamp hour battery, probably 2600, which is almost double what that one is. So by so putting a better quality laptop battery, Yes, so runtime on the drill, if this was 3,000 milliamps and that was 1,500 milliamps, this is double the capacity. So if you nice. join these three together now, you're gonna have, instead of, you could take a Sharpie here and wipe that out and say, so these are 2,300 milliamp hours, effectively it's 2.4 amp hours. So instead of 1.5, we're gonna put three of these in there, so we're gonna have one point, we're gonna have 2.4 amp hours. So we could use whiteout and just change that just for our own knowledge and we'd know that this is an upgraded 2.4 amp hour 12 volt battery. Nice. So they're going to last twice as long hopefully. Twice as many screws, twice as many nice. holes. I hate changing batteries. Yeah, it sucks. Okay, so this one is... let's go back to the picture. So this one, yeah, so that's the circuit board side, circuit board side like that, like that yeah. so positive here, so the middle one's got the negative on this end, so yeah, so the battery, the picture shows that all three cells are stacked like this, where if you look at this side, the circuit board's facing that way, tilt it back. Both positives on the outside battery should be to the top. Let's grab that one here. Now when you're selecting, when you have three different batteries, yeah. you're just pulling randomly yeah, into that no. box. So this is a 2700 milliamp hour battery. So it looks like these batteries were actually a little bit higher than 2600. So they're probably 2800 milliamp hour batteries. Uh, so yeah. So we ideally want to either find all 2700s, if we can, or we can go through and get all close to 2400s, right? So this one's 2399. So you want them close to the same. Yeah, you don't want them to be too off. They, they could be within 100 or 200 milliamp hours, but ideally, you don't want to put a, a higher milliamp hour battery in there. Like if we were to put this 2700 milliamp hour battery, its power would be uh, uh, mis misused because these batteries would reach their full charging voltage before this one would. So this one would effectively not get the charge that it, it could can. take because those ones are ready. So it goes to the lowest number. That's right. So these, these are the determining factor. The lowest battery, it, once it starts to say it's full, its voltage is going to read 4.2 and then the chip in here is looking for an average voltage of so much across all of these. And once it reaches that, it doesn't matter if there's one in there that could handle more juice, it's not gonna get it. So it's just gonna get just gonna get lost. So 
So I can go through 27, so I want my battery to last as long as it can. <laughs> as if I hate changing batteries. The trick is you gotta find 2700s. Twenty-six. Twenty-five. Another twenty-six. Twenty-six thirty-seven. Twenty-six forty-nine. Twenty-six oh two. Those three will work. That's two point six amp hours. That's better than two point four. We get an extra point two. Sounds good to me. <laughs> it's better. Than <laughs> A few more screw holes. <laughs> A little bit of coffee. Okay, so circuit board to me. Positives. Let me see the picture again just to be sure before I go attack welding this. Okay, so I see the circuit board and okay. So I'm con fairly confident that uh, we can do this. So the setting on this is. I'm not even that familiar with this. I've only used it a couple times, but we got a foot pedal down here. <coughs> got a foot pedal, and all you do is hold this down on the battery. Like I said, it's supposed to make a noise. Yeah, you get the styles turn in. There we go. <laughs> so we need to turn the current up. It's not going through this. It's pretty thick. What would happen if you did it to your finger? I don't know. <laughs> oh, thanks. Oh, yeah. <laughs> I'm seeing sparks there. <laughs> well, it's a spot welder, right? So it's. Really need to crank it up. This stuff's thick. A lot thicker than the stuff I've used. There we go. Woo! Sparks. Side and we're gonna blow on it. You really don't want that thing going loose, do you? Yeah, well, I'm just making sure it's on there good. Right? So if this one's got the positive this side, we need the middle one to be an opposite. So we'll tack that one down to get it started. You want these to be really flat. Sticking up too high, it makes it hard. Put this little pressure on it up a little bit. This stuff's really thick. Right off. That's not good. Crank her up some more. Can you crank it up anymore? I don't know. Is it because there might be a little gap in between or might be need to flush? Mm, I'm not sure. Mm, that sounded like a better zap. Some more current. There we go. That's on there now, boys. There we go. I have more power, he says. I'm I have more power. Uh, uh, uh. <laughs> Zap that battery. Let's see. There we go. She's attached, so 
And we'll do the top of this one. Let's get this other battery in here. Match the positive on these ends. Let's push this back down. Yeah, this setting's got some power. Whoa! All right! Woo <laughs> <laughs> okay, so should be wearing eyeglasses. Yeah, yeah suck anyway. I'm not even sure why I did that, to be honest. Okay. Just about this one. Dude. This one, yeah. There. So, in fact, that's done. We just got to put it back in the plastic and. <laughs> that's it! Like, it's that easy. We took three cells. They're going to be eventually available. Uh, I'm going to make these cells that we have. We've recovered thousands and thousands of them from laptops. They've already been categorized. Uh, I'm going to make them available so you guys can uh, do this well, in your own projects. This battery, I believe, costed me a year ago at Lowe's $98 for a double pack. I 100 bucks for, for two. For really, which is just three of these. No, for two of these. So that would be six of these batteries. Six cells. These are really worth 5 to $10 a piece. And they're well worth any every penny to buy them new and they're gonna last hopefully twice as long as these